Right, so now we come to the definition um, of a Taylor polynomial. Okay? So we, in the last video, we kind of played around. We started with the linear approximation, and then we asked ourselves, you know, what if we wanted to move to a quadratic approximation? What if we wanted to move to a cubic? What would the coefficients of those polynomials look like? All right? Uh, so you try to generalize that pattern, and what you come up with is the definition of a Taylor polynomial. Um, so the notation that's used in the Apex textbooks is just P sub n. Um, sometimes you'll see additional decorations here in the subscript. You might see P sub n. You might see a comma f to indicate the function f. You might see a comma c to indicate the point c. Um, most of the time we hope that that's clear from the context and just write simply p sub n. So p n of x right, is going to be f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c. There's the linear approximation. Next term, f double prime at c over 2. Um, and I'm going to write that 2 as a 2 factorial. You'll see why. It helps us follow a pattern. x minus c squared. And we keep going all the way down to a degree n term. So we use brackets to indicate derivative, right? So the n in the bracket means nth derivative. nth derivative at c divided by n factorial multiplied by x minus c to the nth power, right? So the last power that you have is the degree n term, right? So if it's degree 0, well, that's just a number. That's not very interesting. The degree 1 Taylor polynomial is the linear approximation. The degree 2 Taylor polynomial is the quadratic approximation, right? Uh, and then degree 3 and so on, you can go up to, well, really any degree that you want, OK? So that's your Taylor polynomial. Um, if you like, you can write this in summation notation as the sum k going from 0 to n of the kth derivative at c divided by k factorial times x minus c to the k, right? And for, zo for those of you that are watching this in the context of sequences and series, you've seen power series, um, and so you can probably guess what's going to happen next. You let this sum go not to n. We're not going to stop at a polynomial. We're going to go all the way to a power series. We're going to let k go from 0 to infinity. Um, and then you have a Taylor series, right? Um, those of you who are seeing this in calculus 1, you're going to stop at degree n, right? We haven't talked about sequences and series yet. Okay. So that's the formula for Taylor polynomials, right? Um, that factorial, just as a reminder, right? K factorial is notation for the product of the first K integers, so 1 times 2 and so on, up to K, right? Um, so 1 factorial is just 1. 2 factorial, 1 times 2, which is 2. 3 factorial, 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6. We saw that in the, uh, in the last video for the cubic, and so on, right? Um, and these factorials, they grow very fast, right? Um, 4 factorial, 24, not so big. 5 factorial, 120. 6 factorial, 720, right? 7 factorial is like 5,040, right? 8 factorial, now you're into like the 40,000s, right? They, they grow very big, very fast, okay? Uh, to make this formula work, there's a, there's a convention, right, that 0 factorial is defined to be 1, um, right, so that you can write all the terms. So there, there are other reasons why 0 factorial should be 1 other than making the formula work, um, but at this point in your career, you can tell yourself that's why if, uh, if you like. Um, and of course, the whole point of this Taylor polynomial is that for k equal to 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n, if you take k derivatives of this polynomial and you plug in c, 
you are going to get the same result as taking k derivatives of your original function and plugging in c, right? The reason you have these factorials is that as you take derivatives, right, using the power rule, right, the first time you take the derivative, n comes down in front, then an n minus 1, and then an n minus 2, and so on, right, until you've taken n derivatives, and at that point, you've got an n factorial out front that cancels with the n factorial here, leaves you with the nth derivative at c, all right? By that time, all the other terms are lower degrees, so they've all disappeared when you take the derivative, right? Um, and of course, if, you, if, you've only ta if you've taken fewer than n derivatives, there's still going to be a, an x minus c left in there. So when you plug in x equals c, you get a 0. And those higher order terms, they go away as well, right? Uh, so it works out. So the idea here is that you want the derivatives of your polynomial to match the derivatives of your function. And when you do that, you find that the values of your polynomial agree very well with the values of your function, at least over some interval, right? Eventually, they're going to diverge, but over some interval, they're going to agree, right? If you are in the context of looking at series, right, um, we'll see later on that as you add more terms, the approximation gets better, and it gets better over a bigger interval. Um, so if you add infinitely many terms, well, maybe you actually get exact agreement everywhere, right? That's the goal of, of Taylor series, which you're going to see. Um, one last note is that if you put c equal to 0, you get what are called um, Maclaurin polynomials, okay? So frequently, in a lot of problems, you'll be working with Maclaurin polynomials just because they're simpler, right? Instead of working in powers of, say, x minus 2 or x minus 3 or something like that, you just work in powers of x, right? Um, so Maclaurin polynomials are going to look like, you know, f of 0, f prime of 0 times x, f double prime of 0 over 2 times x squared, and so on, right? So you deal with powers of x, and they're, they're a little bit simpler. Okay. Um, so that's how we define Taylor polynomials. It's time to look at some examples where we try to compute these and see how this example works in practice.